So welcome everybody to our meeting for our HBCU Cohort 2 Season A1 classes, our first official meeting. Um, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I have like a 34 inch monitor over here, which is in front of me. And then I have my smaller monitor over here. So I have to share this monitor um, in, in WebEx. So if you see me looking over here and my camera's over here. So apologize ahead of time for that. But what I want to do today, first off, is thank you to the 10 of you who have already completed the intro assignment in Canvas. Um, there's about six of you who haven't, so you need to, to do that for me, if you will, uh, as soon as you can. <clears throat> but what I want to do today is to continue our discussion from yesterday on class format and how the class works um, and what your assignments are going to be and what is expected of you. This class has basically three main components. One is the class content, which is really your reading materials. But so you're going to be reading these materials and having access to um, the, the online uh, quote book. There's going to be packet tracers, which I'll explain in detail here in just a moment, but those are going to be using our simulation engine called packet tracer. And then there will be labs and the labs are going to be those labs that are either completed on real equipment uh, on my net labs stanley.edu or some of the labs are written labs so they're like research labs that you do so let's start first talking about content the reading for the class i showed you this yesterday but i want to show you again where do you get the reading for the class to do that you're going to log into netacad and if for some reason you're not on the i'm learning tab go to the i'm learning some of you may be main contacts at your academy if you are you may have an i'm managing tab you may also have an I'm teaching tab if you have the teaching role. But for you, you need to go to I'm learning and find your HBCU second cohort SU21, so summer 21, and launch the course. Once you do that, you will see our course is here. Um, it is based on um, Moodle. I'm sorry, it used to be based on Canvas. Um, I don't ask. OK, I, I, I struggled, fought, tried to get them, but they're, they're a worldwide company and they have to make best business decisions for a worldwide program. So um, that is why it is now Moodle based. But still, we've got a really good system that's available to you. And if you scroll down, you can see at the each one of the breaks, there's an item that says course content. Now, it really doesn't matter which one of these you click on. But if you click on four to seven, it's going to start you on module four. If you click on one to three, it starts you on module three. But if you click right here, it opens another window, and here is your reading material. And you have access to all of the modules here. So there's 17 modules in our class. We are going to cover every single one of them. Okay, so there's 17 modules in here. Um, when you go to read, one of the things you'll see here is why should I take this module? There's an first thing it gives you is your learning objectives for this particular module, and then it goes straight into the materials themselves. One thing you do need to know about is up here at the top is this course index. This is extremely helpful for you. If you click on course index, you can search for certain items. So for instance, if you wanted to see only the module quizzes, you could click right there and you could go to each module quiz directly without having to go through the entire content. If you wanted to see all the packet tracers, you could click there and you can find all the packet tracers that are available. If you want to see the videos, so on and so forth. You can go and see all the videos. All right. So that little item right here, course index, is extremely useful as you navigate throughout the content. So why don't everybody that's redeemed their seed token, there's 10 of you that's done it, go ahead and go into your course and open up modules one through three and get to the page that says, why should I take this module? And once you do that, just kind of raise your hand and let me know you've been able to get to that point. Okay. So you'll have to log into netacad.com, find your class, and then go directly into it. Click on course content, and then you can go to why I should take this module. I'm going to give you a few minutes seconds here to get to that point. I'm gonna pause the recording while we're doing this. 
Okay, so the question was, is the email that I that's used to log in Netiquette, it depends on whatever you use to um, to redeem your seat token. So it's that email. And so who was asking? Kia, were you asking? Your email is your Gmail email. Yes, got it. Thank you. Yep. And so actually everybody on here has used their work email. Um, and my email is my UDC email, right? Correct. Is my correct? Yes. UDC.edu. Uh, what is the website for NetAcad? Why I cannot get it? I don't Net, NetAcad.com. NetAcad.com. Hey, uh, how's everyone doing? Hey, Demetrius. Hey, I, so the first time I went on, it took, I logged in, uh, I guess, maybe to another Cisco website, even though uh -huh. I went NetAcad, and it actually had me listed I mean, I, I got to see all of the different courses that you guys had versus going straight into this platform. I don't know what I logged into the first time. Are you talking to me? I don't know either, Demetrius. Maybe Cisco Learning Network. I, I don't know. It was so netcad.com slash courses dot networking. I don't know what I, I'm actually still. I you guess. were probably pre login. You were probably. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Right Demetrius. here. You were probably right. looking, this is pre-login before you log in. It shows oh, all the classes. I see, I see. Okay. So you, you're not logged in at, uh, at this point. So you don't really have, you. this only gives you like a, a basic overview of each of the classes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. To, to actually funny. get in the whole cl the class, you've got to do, got to log in. Okay, I'm, I'm there, but I was just, you know, lost for a second there. Yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> that, that's what it is. That's what it was. So I logged in. Okay. So when our next job. You go under I'm learning. So let me share. My yeah, screen. I'm learning. Okay. And then um, once you get inside of your class itself, go down to course content, click on that, and it will take you to this page right here. Okay. Congratulations. This module starts you on a path to a successful career in IT. Yeah, uh, I am in. I watch video yesterday a little bit i tried to finish <laughs> but i couldn't get it that's okay well and what I, the reason i'm mentioning this again is because for this particular class you're reading when i say read module one you are to go in and read this module so as you go through it goes through and gives you all the different you know this what all this is about what a network is made up out of um and i've got a, i've already put a lecture inside the class for you to review so you can review it so as you're watching this, watch the videos. I mean, they, they are very helpful. Some of them are plum cheesy and, and I just say they're there because Flash programmers need to eat too. Um, although it's not Flash anymore, now it's HTML5 um, based. But I do, I do think they, especially later on when we're looking at concepts like uh, MAC address table and how switch handles switching, um, they're very useful. Some of the, some of the uh, videos or little animations are very useful. So when I talk about the class and say, read the materials, and that's what's on the syllabus, then this is what I'm talking about. You would read all this on module one, and then you'll read module two, module three, module four, all the way down to module 17, okay? Because we're gonna cover all 17 modules. So if you get a chance to read ahead, read ahead. Questions about when I have on the syllabus for instance, for this week, you're supposed to be reading module one. So that's pretty much, as we look here, module one, we're reading module one, okay? So that's what's meant by that. Now let's talk about our second item. The other items I assigned to you are packet tracers. Packet tracer is a full simulation for use only with the Cisco Academy. Now, let me explain something to you. The good news is this, you are now Cisco Academies or will shortly be Cisco Academies, which means you can actually use Packet Tracer in other classes. So if you're not using them in your, in, you know, you, obviously you're gonna use them in these CCNA classes, but if you're teaching a, uh, a network, a Security Plus class and you wanna show a concept and you think a Packet Tracer would be good, you can always open up Packet Tracer and you can actually create your own packet tracers. 
So if you want it, and the, and the one thing that you're going to learn as you continue to move throughout this, this thing even has a little simulated um, IoT. Um, if you look in here, there's a 5505, 5506 firewall. Um, in here, there's actually an MCU board. So there's like a little, uh, a little simulated Raspberry Pi. Okay. So there's all kinds of little things you can do here with this. But if you're teaching a class and you're like, you know, I'd like to just show uh, basically how a router, and a, a, a switch works with two PCs. Well, you could go in here and you could actually create your own. So you could go grab 2960 and grab a couple PCs and put those PCs out here. Okay. And then you could connect them. And here's the cabling. So here's your straight through cable. So I'm going to take this straight through cable and connect it from the Ethernet over to uh, FA01 and so on and so forth. So you now legally can do this because you're going to be a Cisco Academy. If you were ever using Packet Tracer beforehand, you weren't a Cisco Academy, you were technically legal um, because it's only useful, only uh, legal at Cisco Networking Academies. We also have built in to the curriculum packet tracers for you to do. So for instance, the one of the packet tracers due this week is packet tracer 105. We go into the curriculum and we go down here and we keep going through and I can go through and look for 105, which by the way, what you do here is you go up to this, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could just click right here and look for packet tracer 105, which is right here, 105. Or again, you could click on the course index, uncheck everything, click packet tracers, there's 105. Click then, it's gonna take you to the same page. Now you will notice logical and physical mode expiration. So this right here, you see the little download. When I click here, if I have Packet Tracer installed on my machine, it will go and download Packet Tracer and install it on, uh, or actually open that particular Packet Tracer. So it, now this is a big Packet Tracer. I mean, a big Packet Tracer. I'll show it to you in a second. But okay. the first, first question you should probably you ask me is, what, Kia? I'm sorry. I, I, I should have put myself on mute earlier, and I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you didn't. You were fine. You were fine. Um, probably one of your big questions, though, is what if I don't have Packet Tracer installed? Excellent question. I'll show you where to go get it. So to get Packet Tracer installed, if you're in the class, okay, you can go to the top of the page here and go to Packet Tracer Resources. All right. Once you go there, let me minimize this because it's opening up Packet Tracer. Once you go there, you will see that there's a download page. Click download. And then you can go get the version that you need for your particular, excuse me, device. You'll see there's, and you want to get the 64-bit version 8 is what you want to use. Now, for those of you using the Mac, I sent out directions as to what you need to do to fix the drag and drop issue. What you actually have to do is when you download these packet tracers, so when I was back here downloading the packet tracer, you wanna download it and then from your downloads, make sure you put it on the desktop, create a folder on the desktop. So you can see where I downloaded this packet tracer right here, but if you open it on a Mac from your downloads folder, the drag and drop will not work. So you need to create a packet tracer folder on your desktop and then put these files in it and open them from that folder. And that will fix the drag and drop issue. But take a look at this packet tracer, all right? So they've done a lot of work with packet tracer eight, to, especially in this post COVID or during this COVID era to try to make it easier for you to show physical world components. Sabrina, go ahead, you got a question, come off mute. Yes, I was trying to see how you got there because oh, okay. I can't get to the packet tracer. Okay, so go, if you're in, in uh, anywhere inside of Netacad, across the top, go to resources, packet tracer resources, click on it, and then go to packet tracer download page. Okay, got it. And then again, grab it for your uh, make sure you get the 64-bit version if you're Windows or Linux, or, or just get the Mac 8 version, which would be okay. fine. Okay. 
One of the things that's required is for version 7.02 classes like you are in, you must have Packet Tracer 8. No other previous version will work. So, um, but now let's take a look at this. So we've got an underground cable, submarine cable between Seward, Alaska, and I think that's Warrington, um, Oregon. If I click here, I can go into Seward and I can actually go into the branch office and then I can even go into, if I go in here, into the actual wiring closet. Now you'll see, as you look in here, it talks about there's a completion. It tells you to do some things. Uh, it tells you how to, in fact, connect the end devices. One of the first things it says is investigate the cable pegboard. So here's the pegboard, all right? It includes two console cables. Remember, those are those nasty Carolina blue cables, which was uh, in a, a meeting I had yesterday in my class, uh, the other CSNA one class. I was talking about console cables are these nasty blue cables, Carolina blue, because I went to NC State. Um, so the, but it says there are two console, 10 copper straight throughs, which are these yellow cables. So if you buy cables from Cisco, their straight through cables are always yellow. You've got four um, fiber cables and a couple um, USBs and um, I believe those are actually um, coaxial cables, a couple coaxial cables. But it says, float your mouse over the ports on PC1. Okay, so here's PC1. And you can actually see the, what the ports are on this machine. So there's a network interface card and there's uh, a fast ethernet, which is down and has no cable in it. And there's a, an ethernet. Now you also, can zoom in, okay, so you can. Um, I have one question on more. From where I will download that? Yep. Packet tracer? Yes. So from where I will download? Okay, it's, you're in Netacad. Mm -hmm. Go to resources. Mm -hmm. Packet tracer resources. Oh, okay. And then packet tracer download, download page. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kelly. Yes. Um, so there's no making a cable test, right? No, not 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 right now. Not with uh, not with uh, COVID. Um, now I will tell you this: there's not even really a making a cable um, inside of the Netacad itself. Now we used to do it. That was one of the main things we did in CSNA one. Not one of the main things, but it, we had to make cables. I still like to do it in my classroom um, because you never know when you're going to be somewhere and you need to make a cable. Now, having said that, real world. I'm going to buy all my cables from a vendor because I'm not going to sit there and make cables. I'm too lazy. Um, but it's a great skill to have, you know. Um, so I would definitely say that that you would want to do uh, you would want to do it if you have time in your classroom. You have the the materials. It also I think is it makes uh, the there's once we move on and we get into the OSI model and we're looking at the physical and the data link layer. If you can have them make cables and plug them in and make the lights blink. It's nice because it, it, it gives them uh, gives them more hands on there than than is in this actual curriculum right now with that portion. Um, now there's a lot of hands on in this. In fact, you'll notice that basically module two has you immediately configuring a switch, which I love. I love the fact that we go from okay, here's module one, networking's great. We're going to work on networks. Here's module two. You're going to learn to do this stuff. You're going to really do it, uh, which is great. Uh, let's see. I got some questions in here. Specific drag and drop issue without issue. Stop it. Okay, Robert, the issue is going to be when you have a packet tracer that has you dragging and dropping items uh, it, the, itself. So it's not the issue with installing packet tracer, it's with the packet tracers running. So, like I said, to open a packet tracer, to open this one, 1.03, which is due next week, you have to download it from inside of Netacad. Well, when you download this, if you open it or allow it to just open directly from wherever it's downloaded on a Mac, it's not, if it has drag and drop in it, it's not going to work. So you have to actually copy that file from wherever the download location is on the Mac um, to a folder on the desktop. So just create a folder on the desktop called Packet Tracers and copy this PKA file over, and then you can open it from there and that will, will fix the issue. So it's not an issue with installing, it's an issue with running packet tracers as we move forward. I understand, that's uh, that's actually to your point, that's what I was uh, referencing, not necessarily the install, but the drag and drop feature, okay. drag and drop feature with no problem on um, 
on uh, Big Sur. Okay, okay, good, excellent, excellent. Well, that's good to know. In fact, uh, if you don't mind, send me that in an email because I think they're trying to track this issue down. Um, they're trying to figure out exactly. So you had no issue at all with Big Sur, and, but you did on you did have it on ten fifteen on Catalina. No, uh, no problem there either. Um, the only yeah. thing was the the lag time on Big Sur, but for Catalina, it was it was just fine for ten fifteen seven. Okay, all right. Well, that's interesting. I I know it, they've they've tracked it down to a third party um, third party uh, program on the operating system itself or in the operating system, um, but. Basically, every packet tracer is going to have on the left hand side directions on what you need to do. OK, so you go through, you're looking at this. It's going to tell you, um, please take and float your mouse over a fast Ethernet with a straight through still selected. So we're going to click a straight through cable. We're going to connect it to the fast Ethernet right here. And it says connect it to any port, I think, on ALS2. OK, now look what just happened. Look at how I now have 16% completion because this is a graded activity. This is an activity that if you do a check results, it actually tells you what it's looking for, for you to do. So this is what's called a graded packet tracer. So as you complete the task, it will give you complete your completion percentage. Now, before you turn this in, I want that completion to be at 100%. All right. So that's one of the things when I tell you that do this week or do next, you know, basically on the 11th would be turning in packet tracer 105. You will do packet tracer 105 and then save it by going file, save as, and just put your name on it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put KFC, that's my initials. I, I would say I had it before um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, but no, actually they were around before I was, believe it or not. But once I've saved it, then what I would do is I, if I was a student in this class, oops, gotta go around teaching. If I was a student in this class and I'm done with that assignment and ready to upload it, I upload it right here. So you complete it, click here, and now I can't upload it. Somebody's already uploaded, excellent. But you can actually upload it, just complete it and upload it with your name, okay? All of our packet tracers, that is how we will complete them. Now, I will tell you, there are some packet tracers that are not really graded. Some of them are what I call look and see packet tracers. So for instance, if we go in here and we look at um, network representation. So let's go to this one, the next one, the second one due next week. So we're gonna go down here and download, actually, I'm going to close this one out. Which by the way, I'll show you something cool before I do that though. You can actually rack and stack equipment so it actually will, this is designed for you to be able to actually play with and develop. Um, you, know, you can pull equipment over and rack it. Um, you can look at the back of it, inspect the rear, see the back of it, see what the devices look like. Um, so they've tried to do this because they knew students were not in the classroom uh, due to COVID. So they've created this so you can actually do, you know, different types of uh, connections. Um, you know, and again, this is not part of the lab here, what I'm doing, but I'm just connecting this so you can see kind of the way it works that, that you've got the ability to do it. Um, I used wrong port, but so let me go open this other one. So let's open 155. 155 is a look and see packet tracer. In other words, as soon as it opens up, a little bit slow. Okay. And by the way, when you open Packet Tracer for the first time, it is going to ask you to log in. You log in with your normal Cisco Networking Academy login. So whatever that whatever that is. So whatever you normally use to get into Netacad. Okay, so let me pull this one over as soon as it finishes loading here. So you will see here is a different Packet Tracer. And you will notice that um, when you look at the item, there's the, the check results, there's really nothing here. There's no check results to do. So people always say, well, how do you know I did it? Well, I have to really take some of it on honor, quite honestly, um, that you're doing it. Um, but with this one, what you're gonna do is you'll still read through everything, do all the different things, items that it says. But look, this is really just saying, 
In Packet Tracer, only the server PT device can act as the server desktop. This is really just showing you different devices in Packet Tracer. There's no real configuration to do in here. All right. Now, I will tell you this, there are some challenge questions. And so like these challenge questions right here, just answer them in a Word document and upload them with this Packet Tracer because I have it set where you can upload more than one file per upload. So just if there's any questions in a packet tracer, just answer them and then upload that as a separate Word document. All right, but it's very important. Some of these are just look and see packet tracers. Okay, can, can we just add another module there, another block similar to what you have done, the like three blocks, and we had the, the fourth block there somewhere. Do what, Dr. Who? Add another box? Yes, another block, just like you have three blocks already. I add another block, the fourth block, somehow demonstrate. We'll, we read all those things and, uh, you know. You can't on the pre-made packet tracers, but you will be able to when you make your own packet tracers. With, okay. with right. these, you can't add to these because these are pre-made. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So when I talk about packet tracer assignments in the syllabus, that's what I mean by these. So the first two you have due is 105, which is actually a configuration packet tracer. It has some tasks for you to do. And then packet tracer 155, which is a look and see packet tracer. Then the, the last item that we have for our class are labs. Labs are can be one of two types. They can be a written lab with no equipment, like the one that's due this week, or it can be one that uses equipment. Let me show you, wrong thing. Let me show you a lab that is just a written lab. So for instance, our very first lab, research IT and networking job opportunities. Okay. This lab is nothing more than you going to look in your area for jobs and for different types of things that are available. Now, I know this is a PDF, but all you have to do is open this PDF in Word, convert it to a Word document, and then you can fill in all your information. Now, when you do fill it in, one thing I suggest is um, use a different color. So make your text like blue, just so it's easier for me to see. But if you download this document, um, to your downloads or wherever, you can open it with Word. And so Word will open PDFs and convert them immediately. So um, let's go browse. Oop, not documents, downloads. So here's the, the actual um, lab itself. It's a PDF. It's going to bark at you and say, are you sure you want to do this? Click OK. And now it gets converted into a Word document. And so you can go in here. And I know they use monster.com. I actually typically use indeed.com more. I think indeed is a little better um, job search. But like here, it says, now try, did you find jobs in the locations you entered? You know, you can put in, uh, yes, I found many. You know, I probably would prefer you be a little more specific than that. And then we just, um, make the text actually have color, all right? So you can make it red, blue, whatever you wanna do um, so that I can see your answers easily. Then you save it with your name and upload it, just like you do with the packet tracers. So you just go in here, you complete the lab, and then you can go in on the class itself and you will see that I have an upload for lab 193, all right? Now that's the labs that are just written labs. We do have, if you look in the syllabus, okay, I'm gonna close this. If you look in the syllabus, you will see that beginning the week of the 18th, you're gonna have labs that use our NetLab system. And that is the ones in bold, okay? Those are, labs that use our actual hands-on gear. So I'm gonna show you the NetLab system and I'm going to show you, I will send out an email with information on how you get into it.
but I won't be doing that until later in the week because I want you to first get comfortable with finish up Canvas, get in netacad.com, then we'll worry about NetLabs. NetLabs is a, an amazing system, okay? It is built by a company called NDG, NetDev Group out of Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. Um, and what it does, as I go in here and I schedule the lab for myself, you will have a class that is uh, named, I'll give you the class name, but basically you'll have a class that is uh, CCNA, it'll be KFC, uh, IT and HPCU, second cohort, summer 21. Um, but in this class, you're going to be able to find the lab. So see this lab right here, 292. That's the first lab that uses real equipment. So when you log in, you'll go new lab reservation, schedule lab for myself. You'll find your course of which you will only be in one, not these 7,000 courses like I am because I'm in everything. Um, you'll find the lab you want to do, you'll click on it. You're then gonna have to find a pod that is available. Now it looks like, wow, Kelly's only got four pods. That's ridiculous. I can't do these labs. They don't have enough equipment, blah, 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 blah. No. If you click the little arrow here, we have 16 pods online. And those 16 pods each have two routers and two switches. So I'm gonna to go to pod 16 and this red arrow is right now. So if you wanna do a lab right now, you click there. If you wanna do a lab Saturday, okay, at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., you can schedule your lab out as far as you want. Just please, if you schedule a lab and find out you can't do it, please make sure you cancel that lab. Because if you schedule it, it's gonna boot up and wait, even if nobody, no student comes to it. And so you'll be using lab resources that your classmates could have used. So I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. I'm going to schedule this lab for right now and I'm going to schedule it for, I'm going to do about a little over two hours. Once you do this, one of the important things to realize is this is real gear. This is a two real switches, two real virtual machines that are Windows 10 booting up in my data center down the hall. It will take about five to eight minutes for the switches to fully boot. So if you know you want to schedule the lab and you, got, you think it's going to take you about an hour to do the lab, you need to schedule 10 minutes on the front end and 10 minutes on the back end because if you schedule two hours, you really only have an hour and 50 minutes because the system stops in the last 10, last, with 10 minutes to go to clean up all the stuff so that it's available for the next student. The good news is there is a way to extend your reservation. If you get toward the end of your reservation, you run out of time, it's called extensions. You will be able to do that. But just realize you're not able to jump in here and immediately be in the switch. Because look, this switch is booting. It's literally going through the boot process. It's a real switch. So it's not a simulation. The PC is booting, just like a real PC. In fact, it is a real PC. It just happens to be virtualized, OK? So this is the lab topology for this lab. Now, very important is this, you see the content document. You must use this document when you do a lab inside of, of NetLabs. In other words, every time you do a lab in NetLabs, you must use the information from the content tab to do the lab, because you'll see right here, this has been updated for use on NetLabs Plus. So if you try to do, there's one lab in particular that just will not work the way it's written for the normal classroom. So you must always use the content from the content tab to do your lab. Now, if you've got multiple monitors, the cool thing is you can open this up in another window and sit this over on one side. And um, so you can sit this on one side. It's a little hard with this. And you can actually still have access to the devices over here. So if you've got multiple monitors, it's very easy to do. Um, but you'll notice, like I said, that switch is still booting. So it's sitting here booting through, but it's, it's such an amazing system because it's a real switch. The good news too is when you get done, these PCs, no matter if you put an IP address on them, no matter if you've uninstalled stuff, no, you could destroy the operating system. Doesn't matter. When this lab reservation is over, the system on the back end reverts it to a snapshot that is clean and has no effect from what you've done during the lab. 
So that's, you know, a lot of people like to, to create their own remote access to their devices, but they don't have this automation function that allows you to roll back to um, snapshots like we do with, with NetLabs. We've been using NetLabs for about 17 years now. Uh, we were actually one of the first schools. Uh, we were the first school in uh, the United States, actually in the world, to be allowed to teach Cisco Networking Academy online. Um, and that was because we had a NetLab system. And you know, without this, I would not wanna teach Cisco Networking Academy online, unless I had a way for students to come in to the classroom, to the lab once a week and work on real gear. Um, you just, you know, you, uh, Packet Tracer is a great thing, but we don't wanna teach our students just on Packet Tracer. You've never seen a job ad that said two to four years of Packet Tracer experience. They don't want that. They want you to have experience working on real gear. So what just happened, you'll notice is the switch is now available. So I can now actually do all the different things that I would do with a switch, like a normal switch. I can do question mark, I can do everything because it's a real switch. So for our hands-on labs that require net labs, this will be the system you're going to use. You don't even need to worry about that till next week because we're not gonna be doing any lab that requires it. It's only the labs that are in bold that are the ones that must be done on NetLabs. And yes, I am requiring you to do them on my NetLab system because I need a way to see that you're actually doing the work. The beauty of NetLabs for me as an instructor is the bane of all of my students because uh, what is amazing about this is I actually have the ability go into classes and I can actually look at a lab. Actually, I did the wrong one. I didn't do, let me, hold on a second. I suppose to do lab usage, not class usage. Um, usage labs. Find my class here, which is this, this one. So I can find where I did a lab, this lab right here, but I can go in here and look and I actually can see every single command that was typed on the device. So you can see here, everything that I put in, now none of that I put in. So you can see on this particular one, I didn't do anything, nothing. So if I actually go back up here and the student was to say, hey, I did this lab completely, I could say, hey, you know what? You really didn't because you didn't even type in a command. But I can also show by looking at this, I can see the commands. It's also neat because if you have a problem, I can go in here and look at it and say, oh, I see what you did wrong. You typed in the wrong password or you put in the wrong IP address. So be aware that that's why I require you to do those labs on my system. If you have local gear in your lab, feel free to do some there too. Um, but for us, for this class, this is how I track your hands-on labs that you're doing. Let's go back again. We have two different types of labs. They can be written labs that are, do not require equipment, such as lab 193, lab 238, lab 379, and 344. And then there are labs that require equipment, which require our networking academy, that's, or our, excuse me, our net labs, 292, 3710, and so on and so forth, down through the class. Questions. You do not have a NetLabs login yet. You will have one by the end of this week. Your login will be your Stanley email address and your password will be Cisco123 to start with, but that will be in an email that I send you. So you don't have to remember that right now. That will be in an email and I will have you test your access to netlabs.stanley.edu. Uh, uh, we will have a list of commands for the net lab uh, before we get in there, right? Otherwise, we don't know what to type in for this command there. It's, it's inside the lab itself. So when you go in the lab and you click on content, it tells you right here. So in this lab, you're going to deploy a simple network, instructions, configure the PC host, configure static IP address information on the PCs according to the table. Now, it doesn't give you the exact commands to do that. So, you know, hopefully we can, you know, configure static IP addresses on PCs. So, which is actually just going in here and open up your network and internet settings. 
and oh, I don't want Windows Update because it doesn't have these don't have internet connection. I can go in here and change the IP addresses on these. So the content right here tells you what to do. So it tells you to do that. And then it says, okay, click on the switch to access the console port. So I'm gonna click right here. So I'm, I'm at the console port. Let me exit this, okay? This is again, why it's nice to have two monitors. So you can have this open and be looking at it. And it says, um, you access it using privilege mode, you type enable. And so the, all the content is in that lab document. And if you spell it correctly, it works. So right here's all the content to tell you what to do. So Dr. Hugh, yes, you do have yes. you do have the 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 information to tell you what to do. Thank you. You're very welcome. But the good news is by the end of this class, you won't need the document. You're gonna be able to do it all, just you'll know the commands. We're, we're gonna teach you how to do it. All right. So I have another question. Uh, okay. Earlier, you mentioned said we have an exam. I, I wonder that exam is like a written exam, multiple choice, or writ or some kind of a you know lab related. And also, okay. I wonder like an exam. Can we have like a more than one attempt or just one attempt? Yes. One. Here, first off, you do have chapter exams or module exams. So you see here, there's a module exam. When we get finished with modules one through three. In the syllabus, you will see I list take modules, um, take the modules one through three exam, which will not be until 518. When you do that, you'll literally go in here and just click on this exam and it will open up. <clears throat> now, the exams are not active yet because if there's only 10 of you who have redeemed your seat token, if I activate the exams right now, only they only activate for the 10 who are in the class at this moment. They don't activate for students who haven't redeemed their seat tokens yet. So as soon as all of our 16 classmates get in, I will activate these exams for you. The module exams, I let you take them up to 10 times. I don't, I'm just wanting you to learn the material. Okay, so you can take them up to 10 times. I don't have to re-enable them. You just take them for to learn the material. At the Thank very you so end, much. Yeah, at the very end of the class, there is a final written exam, okay, right here, that you will have to take. And you have up to three attempts on it. Um, I want you to make a 70 or higher, um, but like I said, you'll have multiple attempts on it too. But the module exams, we just use them to learn the material. Not, I'm not trying to, to pass fail somebody based on your module, um, your module exam scores, okay? But again, those will not be turned on until all classmates redeem their seat tokens. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because you, as an instructor teaching these classes, you have to do the same thing for your students in order for them to be able to turn on, uh, for them to take exams. So I'll teach you how to do that. Okay, Kia, got a question? Yes, yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, Kia, you've got your hand up. Yes, uh, I was going to ask uh, if we were teaching this class in, in our Cisco Academy, all of these materials will be available to us. We don't have to go and look for it anywhere. Correct. Now, the okay. only thing that will not be here, all these uploads that I've created, mm -hmm. they are not in the base class shell. I, uh, as your Academy Support Center, I share a shell with you so you can upload these or you can download these and put mm -hmm. them into your class so you want to recreate all this stuff. Okay. Yep. Um, and then an, another question is um, these exams um, that we're taking, um, do they mimic the actual like CCNA certification questions? They, I would say the module exams are probably not to that level. Now, when we get to the third class, there is a practice certification exam in the third class, the CCNA three, um, but they're pretty close. I mean, they, I would say they're I passed the new CCNA seven last last July. Actually, it was the day after my birthday. I looked at it last uh, yesterday, um, and and they're pretty close. Um, I will tell you one thing. I have learned if you see something once in the curriculum, obviously it's important. You see it twice, yeah, you know you're going to at least see it on a module exam. If you see it three times in the curriculum, it's probably on the certification test because that's that's just something I've learned as as we go through now. Obviously, I can't tell you what's on the certification test, other than the fact that if, I, I hate to say this, I, I'm gonna show, 
my my ignorance. Um, it took me 20 something years to figure this out and actually took me working on creating a certification test for a company. But as you go in here and you go to um, training and certifications under cisco.com and you go and you look for the CCNA itself. So you're gonna go look for the CCNA exam. All right, where's it at? Come on now. Uh, okay, so training CCNA. Let's not do that one. Let's just do the CCNA certification. Explore all certifications. There it is. So in the CCNA certification area, one of the things that is important is that you are aware of the different tracks. So here, here's what we're preparing your students for, 2301 CCNA. Under this, you will notice that there is um, exam topics. So if I do review exam topics, it'll open up a list of all the exam topics. So what I teach my students is download these exam topics in PDF format. And as you're going through the curriculum, at, when you're ready to go take the exam, you better know what a router does, which by the way, we explain that partly in, in module one. You better know what a WAN is, what a SOHO is. Those are actually in module one of this course. So this is the blueprint for the exam. The other thing is this, this verb is extremely important. Okay, it goes along with the uh, taxon Bloom's taxonomy. Explain the role, describe, compare. But then when you get down here, okay, you better be able to actually configure VLANs, which we're gonna learn in CCNA 2, your next class. So if it says configure inner switch connectivity, you better be able to make trunk ports. You better be able to set up trunk ports. You're gonna learn how to do all this. So this exam blueprint is very important for you and for your students as they prepare for the certification exam. Okay, because there's a, you know, it, configure and verify layer two discovery protocols. I'll give you a great example of how this helped me just the other day. I'm inside of my data center my data center doesn't use Cisco switches. It uses uh, um, Dell switches. I needed to find another device. Well, I know I couldn't use CC CDP, but I could use LLDP, which is logical link uh, datagram protocol or discovery protocol, logical link discovery protocol. And I could find what was connected to my switch. So this is very important for you to know. All right. So if you haven't already, I would download this topic list and store it somewhere and um, make it you know, the, your source of how you're gonna study for your certification exam. In fact, I'll stick it in chat. Uh, I got a question over here on chat. Sorry, I missed it. What is competitions.stanley.edu? Competitions is another one of our systems. We have multiple NetLab systems. NetLabs is where our, um, all of our real Cisco gear is located. Competitions is another system that has um, packet tracer pods on it. It has um, some DevNet uh, beta pods. It has uh, some beta Cisco Modeling Labs pods on it. Um, so it's just another one of our, our NetLab systems. Okay. Okay, Robert's making a very good point. So Mac users that don't have access to Word, you can right click the PDF and open it in preview, and then click the markup tool and find, yep, and do it that way. So that's another excellent way to do that. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm not a Mac user. Um, I've actually never owned a Mac at all. Um, I like, I wanted to get one, but um, just hadn't been able to pull the trigger on it and get one. Um, but uh, thank you. So I may be asking those questions. But I put in chat the, uh, the link to these topics so you can download it. And uh, I'll actually download it and stick it in our class too. So, so it's at the, underneath the modules. By the way, I can do this. Um, one thing you're going to learn is that you can actually add items to the class because it is a fully functioning, uh, fully functioning uh, Moodle instance. Okay, so I'm just going to do a file here, add, and I'll say CCNA exam features. And we'll drag our files over. So let's pull that over. Boom. 
save and display, and you've now got it in class under our course introduction block right there, okay? So you do have that if you, you need it or want it. Okay. So any questions about what we're doing in class and what is expected in class? Are right we, now, are we, yep. go ahead. Are we meeting every day at 3 p.m.? No, we're meeting every Tuesday at 3. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. and it, this is a, the the link that I just sent you is our link for every Tuesday from now till June, uh, July 12th. Got it. And if we need to meet more or if people need to meet individually, that's fine. But our only absolute day that we've got is uh, June, uh, the Tuesdays from 3 to 3 to 4. Um, and if you can't make it, that's fine. But I do expect instructors to review these meetings if they miss, um, because it's very important that you that you do that. This is a, my, my main way to, to give you information. Okay. So for next week, let's go ahead and read module one, complete the first two packet tracers and the first lab. That's what's due for you for next week. Um, the other thing, obviously, you have in here, if you want to watch it, there is a lecture for module one that I did. Um, so you're welcome to watch that lecture. Um, if you don't want to read, you can watch the lecture. I know some people are visual learners. Um, I would read and watch the lecture, quite honestly. Um, also, if you like the lectures and you want to use it in your classes, feel free to use them. I'm, I put them on YouTube and make them public. Um, you know, I've got like 670 subscribers, so I'm not going to retire off my YouTube income. Um, in fact, I don't even have my channel monetized. Um, so if I have noticed, even though I don't have the channel monetized, it's doing ads, and I apologize for that, but I guess it's, they're letting me store stuff up there, so I can't really say much. Um, but be aware, I, I did not monetize the channel. Um, it's just doing doing ads on its own. Um, so feel free to use it uh, if, you, if you want to do so. Okay, any questions about our class? One more, one more question here. So uh, I right. just wonder if you get A from this class, will we, where will, where will we be able to pass that certificate exam? Okay. Well, first off, you've actually got to complete three classes. You got to complete the CSNA one, two, and three. At the end of that, you will be able to go to view uh, a view testing center. Okay, and you will be able to take or schedule the exam at a view testing center. Um, we are a view testing center at Stanley Community College, and I'm sure there are ones around you. You can take it online, um, like sitting at home, taking it online. I don't recommend that. I did the season A7 that way, and I don't recommend it because one of the things you have at a testing center is you have a little, uh, basically a grease board with a erasable marker. So you can write things and you can do your calculations on it. If you take the exam online that you just have an online board and it is very difficult to use. Um, so if you can do it in person, I would do it. Um, but Dr. Hugh, you won't do it until after you've had all three classes. And the good news is if you make a 70 or higher on the final exam for CCNA 3, which all of you should do, and I'll explain that later, but you should do, then you will get a 60% uh, off discount voucher to take your CCNA exam. Excuse me, 70%. Your students get 60, you get 70. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, everyone, that's all I've got for today. Um, we are on our way and we have gotten started here. So I'm tickled to have everybody in class. Thank you so much for, for being with me two days in a row. Um, I know it's difficult to cut that time out of your uh, schedule, but uh, I think it's very helpful to have that meeting on the first day to kind of calm your nerves. Now we've got our plan. We know what we're going to do, um, and we can move forward from here. All right. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I have a question. Thank you. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Rob. Thank you so much. Yes. Could you help me to get to um, the seat and the token and also to net net uh, to the net classroom? Yep. Yep. I'll do that. Uh, Robert, hold on one second. I'm going to stop the recording.